I'm Miss Chamonix and this is my ski trip. Hi, welcome to Chamonix. I went on a spontaneous ski trip, my first in Europe, and wanted to share updates on how much it costs to ski in Chamonix. In this video, I'll share how much it costs for lift tickets, housing, food, and I even came during a music festival on the mountain, so I'll share costs for that too. Plus, some tips at the end about saving money on ski clothes. For those who don't know me, hi, I'm Yuki. I'm a Chinese American. I've lived in London for the last year, and I make videos about personal finance, travel, and expat life. I'm a beginner and using this video to decide if it's worth continuing to go on ski trips. I'm pretty afraid of dropping my phone right now, but I think it's kind of crazy how far up I am. And I'm about to ski a blue for the first time in years. So after practicing a few greens all day, I think I'm feeling more comfortable. Let's see how this goes. I feel like it's great as an annual trip with your friends, but it's also known for being quite expensive. Still on the ski lift going up to a blue. I haven't made it to Bravant, but I talked to one of the security ski patrollers and they said that it's blue minimum in Bravant. And since I'm really only comfortable with greens and blues right now, I will be happy sticking to the Flagere side for now. The first was getting to Chamonix. I flew round trip from London to Geneva. I bought this ticket super last minute, only a few days before takeoff. Flights were $265, that's about 210 pounds. I used the remainder of my credit card points to pay for my flight. I then took Alpi bus from Geneva Airport to Chamonix Sud for $28, it was 22 pounds which was about an hour. I was a little worried because I only have 45 minutes between my flight landing and the bus transfer, but I was able to get through passport control with enough time to spare. The list of tickets for two days was 128 euros. Got in on the first day, didn't ski, went and picked up my gear, walked around the town. And then the second day is when I started skiing. So second and third day are skiing. Fourth day is again, checking out the town and then coming back to Geneva. I picked up my lift pass from the Chamonix tourist office. That's the little kiosk. The next cost is accommodation. Here's the Airbnb with the kitchen and sofa bed. I'm going to be sharing the bedroom with one other friend and we've got this about 15 minutes away from the bus station where I got dropped off. So very easy to get to. I walked through the small town and now I'm just settling in. I went with one other friend for this trip and the total for our Airbnb in the town center was $346 for four nights for two people. My friend stayed one night longer than me, so it's really $43 per night. And for me, it was $129. For equipment, I rented a snowboard, snowboarding shoes, and helmet from Chamonix Ski. Uh, ski gear was about 50 euros when I paid. I had to put down a five euro deposit first. That ended up being 56 euros for a two day rental. I got a 19% discount because I booked online. I'm skiing in what's considered peak season for Chamonix. I'm also really lucky because it snowed both days that I skied, which helped a lot since some of the piece got icy in the afternoon. I'm actually on my way back to swap the snowboard for skis because snowboarding is too hard and I'm falling too much. I'm on the gondola back and I was snowboarding for a while, but decided I'm gonna switch to skis because the learning curve on these snowboard and I did two runs, but the learning curve for the snowboard is way too high right now. Plus my friend I'm with is skiing, and I just don't think we can do a run together if I'm snowboarding and she's skiing, because she's doing blacks right now. So I'm just gonna squ switch to skiing. And I think I could have seen this coming where if you've got an advanced gear and a beginner snowboarder, just do skis, make your life easy. And the runs on skis are just so much easier. So I'm gonna switch to skis now. And it's 11 o'clock, which means that I had an hour or maybe even half an hour to do two runs on the snowboard and I'm just switching because at least I get more time than practice on skis. I took a fall earlier and I hit my head. Um, luckily I have this helmet, so it cushioned most of it, but I just don't feel very safe snowboarding because of how much I'm falling. And I think my mental state is just thinking I'm scared and I just don't really want to 
have my both days spent scared on the snowboard. I'd rather just have a fun, easy time. So I'm switching to skis. I walked back to the store, asked to switch my rental, and the guy just swapped it for me. I didn't have to pay any extra for the switch. So I lost my gloves. They were clipped to my jacket and now they're gone. So I think in some point between me getting my skis and boots on and coming up the mountain and now where I am at the lodge, I've lost the gloves, which I borrowed from a friend. So now I don't know what to do because there's no place to buy gloves up on the ski lodge and there's no place to get another pair. So I have to figure out what to do. And I have to tell my friend I lost his gloves that I borrowed from him, which is very, which I feel really bad about. I was a bit in shock that I was gloveless at the top of the mountain with no options to buy new gloves. But then I went to the security person at the Telekabin Condola and asked if there was a lost and found and in broken French requested to take a pair of gloves. This is the lost and found box where I got my gloves from next to the Telekabin area. And the guy was nice enough to hand me a mismatched set that I used for the next two days. I also have to replace the set that I lost, which was cheaper to buy in the US, but they're out of stock there, so I have to buy in the UK. And that's 75 pounds for the Burton gloves that I borrowed from my friend and then lost. I didn't realize they were so expensive, otherwise I would have just bought 20 pound gloves to begin with. Also, my friend and I bought tickets to this concert that is happening this week. So tickets for today is 30 euros. Tomorrow is also 30 euros, but it got rescheduled due to winds. My friend is super into music and found this festival. The festival partnered with the resort so that on some days the bubbles, aka gondolas, would stay open later than 4.30 so that we could go back down the mountain in the evening. You can't see anything in the gondola right now because of all the snow. This is deep house music apparently. I'm a music newbie. Tickets were 30 euros each day, and I got tickets for both days, so 60 euros total. It was supposed to take place on the mountain both days that I got tickets for, but because there was too much wind, the location was moved to a venue near our Airbnb for the second day. These are also day concerts, so they were usually done by the evening. In the evening, my friend and I got dinner, took a walk around town, and then went to bed around 9 or 10 p.m. so that we could get up early for skiing. The classic things you need to eat while in the French Alps are raclette, and this was 31 euros per person, minimum two orders, and période de boeuf, which is where you take slices of meat, roast it, grill it on this hot stone. The last night we got Cool Cats hot dogs, which are huge artisanal hot dogs, just to have something quicker to eat. And we wanted to have time to go souvenir shopping for friends and family. I ended up spending $66 across biscuits, postcards, playing cards, alcohol, and more. I figured it would be better to get a bunch of souvenirs, but next time I'll probably budget better for gifts. Groceries are pretty cheap here. I got 14 euros worth of eggs, yogurt, oranges, sausages and pesto. I also bought croissants and sandwiches from the sandwich place next door to eat on the mountain instead of buying. My friend spent 16 euros just for pumpkin soup for lunch when she bought from the mountain restaurant, which seemed ridiculous. So I'm quite glad that I picked up sandwiches and warmed them at the top of the mountain where they had a microwave in one of the lodges. On the way back from Chamonix to Geneva, I took Flix bus from Chamonix Sud to Geneva City. And to spend a day in Geneva, I spent about $22 or 18 pounds, followed by a train from Geneva train station, Gare Coravin, to the airport for about three francs. Let me know if you wanna see a video about how much I spent during one day in Geneva. Here's a summary of all the costs and a sample of what I ate and prices. Some tips. I recommend that you rent your equipment by searching ski rental shops nearby where you stay. Chamonix Ski, the shop that I went to, was a 15 minute walk from my Airbnb, which feels a lot longer when you're carrying skis around. Even if it was cheaper than the equipment rental shop next door, it's worth a few extra dollars for the convenience. My friend rented from Sport 2000 Sham Sport, which was across the street from where we stayed and has multiple locations where you can drop off your equipment. If you don't have any ski or snowboarding clothes and it's too last minute to buy it on Amazon, you can check out Mountain Warehouse, Decathlon, 
and TK Maxx in London. Or you can try to buy them at Chamonix itself if you're going late in the season and a lot of places will be holding sales to get rid of stock. I was too last minute and had to buy all my ski and snowboarding clothes. Didn't have enough time to buy everything, hence why I borrowed gloves. If you need gloves and are desperate, you can go to the Lost and Found section at the lift, police station, or tourist visitor center. You might even find the expensive Burton gloves that I had to reorder because I lost them somewhere in the city. I added some links in the description for where I ordered and looked up different things. Thanks for watching.